Greetings viewer, I am Flurgo, and this is the foreword to this video, so I can give you some context as to what this video is actually meant to be. But if you like, you can skip ahead here and find out along the way. For those of you that stayed, this is my first attempt at what I call a narrative playthrough, which I'm doing with the video game Unpacking. Essentially it's just like a video game roleplay, but presented in the style of a third person narrative, kind of like a typical novel or book. My favourite thing about video games are the unique stories you create with them, and I feel like this scripted format will capture this much better than a standard Let's Play video. This isn't a review or a retrospective, it's a retelling of the narrative I created through my gameplay choices. Without further ado, I hope you enjoy. Frederick was so excited to finally have his own room. No longer would he have to share with his charming sibling, who always took his toys. All this new space was his to fill. The first thing he did was get all of his stuff out of the boxes and spread it out on the floor. This way he could clearly see how many things he had and chuck the boxes out of his room. Frederick's belongings put his personality on display. He loved drawing, reading, soccer, music, and most of all toys. A pretty stock standard kid. He started organising his room by setting up his desk with all of his creative tools, his drawing book directly in front of the chair ready to be used at a moment's notice. His secret diary however, would hide it away in the drawer. No one needs to see the misspelt inner thoughts of a child. The radio and cassette tapes would look good next to the desk atop the cabinet. Listening to music and drawing was a match made in heaven. Next up, the books made their home on the shelves where they fit nice and snug. Fred's framed masterpiece would also need a home, somewhere everyone could always see it and observe its beauty, like right here on the wall. The board games weren't quite as important and didn't get played with much, so they could go inside the cabinet. Equally as unimportant was this poster, which Fred definitely felt he had grown out of. It seemed a bit girly as well. Into the cabinet. Something that was very special though was Mr. Pig and his other soft plushy friends. They, of course, had to live up on Frederick's bed, the penthouse, where it was comfy, cosy, and ripe for snuggles. The not-so-huggable action figures were downgraded to the studio apartment, that is, the bookshelves. But they were a tough bunch, so they could handle it. All that was left now were a few other miscellaneous items. Frederick thought the technology things should be put inside the cabinet, where they were less likely to break. The remaining toys could fill up the bottom shelves, and lastly, his school bag could sit next to his desk and chair so he could easily grab out homework and put it back in. However, something in his mind just wouldn't allow it, so he put it beside the cabinet where he couldn't even see it. Hmm, perhaps he wasn't going to like school anymore. Finally, my own room, he thought to himself as he looked upon his work. Everything was unpacked and he was very proud. Frederick not only had his own room, but his own apartment. A very small college student apartment, that is. Uni was beginning soon, so he'd have to unpack and get organised, unless he was wanting a chaotic start to his tertiary studies. Frederick repeated the process he did all of those years ago. He got everything out of the boxes and spread it everywhere. Um, what are those? Um, Frederick? Yeah, so it was this point in the game where I realised you actually play as a female character, so... Frederick is now Frederica, or Freda for short. That probably explains the uh, poster. Anyway, now it was time for Frederica to decide which room to start with. She thought she'd go from smallest to biggest, thus she began in the bathroom. The bathroom was small and didn't have much storage, which was fine for Freda, since she didn't have too many toiletries. The two extra toilet paper rolls would sit beside the toilet rather than in the cupboard. That way she wouldn't have to waddle over with her pants down when the current roll ran out. For a while she felt a bit flustered, as she couldn't find a place for both her hand towel and her body towel. However, her perceptive skills caught up and she discovered a hook on the door. The shampoo, conditioner and soap were appropriately positioned in the bathtub shower. 
she put her daily use items such as her hairbrush, toothbrush and toothpaste on the basin and the not so frequently used things in the cupboard. And with that, the bathroom was ready for all of Freyda's hygiene needs. Next was the kitchen, which was organised in a very orthodox and unexciting way. It's a kitchen, what do you expect? Cutlery went in the cutlery drawer with the big chopping knife. All the other utensils went in the drawer below. Sponge and cleaning liquid went on the sink. Tea towels, paper towels, oil and bug spray went underneath the sink. Plates, bowls, cups went up on the shelves. The kettle and toaster kept close to the power point. And lastly, the cookie jar was placed in a very accessible spot. Frederica would need plenty of motivation cookies to get her through the degree. Now it was time for a room that was actually fun. Her bedroom! She set up her work and art area fairly quickly in case she felt like drawing, or wanted to lose a couple hours on KOTOR on the PC. She also had her radio and album cases set up so she could listen to music as she decorated her room. Freda put her drawing book in the shelf space of the bedside table, so if any ideas came to her while she was in bed, she could easily write or draw them down. Next to it, she also put her photo album and piggy bank. Looking above the bedhead, Freda saw some very noticeable imperfections on the wall. A little hole and a big smudge. She wondered how she would cover them up as she stared at her little framed artwork and big framed artwork that would perfectly hide the wall marks. An idea popped into her mind, and I'm sure you know exactly what it was. She hung up her remaining wall decor and moved on to some miscellaneous and childhood items, which she put up on the high shelves as she knew she wouldn't be playing with them much. Although Mr. Piggy and his cat friend obviously had to live on the bed. They weren't toys, they were family. All that was left now were the clothes. Shoes on the ground, undergarments in the drawers, pants and shirts organised into piles, Jackets hung up, and spare jam jams up high, the ones in use go underneath the pillow. With the clothes sorted, the bedroom and the rest of the apartment was all ready for Frederica to get settled into, and turn into an absolute pigsty as uni became stressful and the late nights became far too frequent. Of course, she didn't know that yet. Freda looked at her calendar. Classes start Monday, she said with glee and optimism. Uni. Here I come. After three stressful but successful years, Frederica had her degree and was out of uni. However, it was a creative arts degree, so she wasn't going to be making much money, at least not for a while. Fortunately, she had made two great friends while at uni that she was now moving in with, meaning paying rent would be much easier. Before worrying about rent though, Freda needed to unpack. She had accumulated quite a bit more stuff since uni, which wasn't too much of a problem, as now she had five whole rooms to put the stuff in. Obviously her friends had their own belongings inhabiting the house already, but Freda was sure she could work around it. She began in the living room, which didn't have a whole lot of space on offer. Because of this, she stored her things as she unpacked, rather than spreading everything on the floor. Her GameCube console, controllers and games were the first to escape the cardboard confines and all ended up entrapped within the TV cabinet. Her film and music collection would also hunker down in the living room. All of Freyda's entertainment devices were available for everyone to enjoy. Another room for enjoyment was the dining room which had tabletop RPGs and figurines strewn around the place. Freyda added her own figurine, dice and rule books to the mix. She even had artwork of their characters. Suffice to say, she was eager to finish unpacking and begin a new epic campaign with her friends. On a less interesting note, most of her books ended up on the dining room shelves as they didn't have anywhere to go in her bedroom. The multi-purpose shelf well and truly had evolved into a bookshelf. Speaking of bedroom, that's where Frederica went next. This room was what she was used to, completely empty. There was plenty of space to empty the boxes all over the ground. She set up her desk as she unpacked, turning it into the ultimate creative space. Markers, brushes, pencils, a drawing tablet, and even an MP3 player for listening to music, since her stereo system was in the lounge room. Apart from a few wall decorations, everything else was all over her floor and bed, just like the old days. Freda thought it would be wise to first hang up her barista uniform. Don't want to go to work looking all crinkled. 
After that, she put her uni degree certificate up above her desk to remind her of her true creative passions. Latte art could only stimulate her mind for so long. Her footwear would receive much less attention. They would go at the bottom of her wardrobe and one pair of shoes would annoy her endlessly as they just couldn't fit beside the others. Above the shoe disaster, her shirts fit perfectly on the shelf, as did the pants, as did the pyjamas, and as did the undergarments. It's just those DAMN SHOES! To finish off in the wardrobe, Freda put her activity gear down below the hanging clothes. She may not play much soccer anymore, but frisbee, weights, and rock climbing were all on the table now. What a very fit and active young lady. She even has a yoga mat beneath the bed, and above that are of course Mr. Piggy and Mrs. Catty, along with two new friends, Henny and Chicky. With the bedroom complete, Frederica continued her quest into the bathroom. Seeing there was very little storage space, Freda once again spread her stuff on the floor to assess how many things she had. At first she was unsure where it would all go, but to her relief and appreciation, her roommates had actually left her quite a bit of room. The top shower shelf, the middle shelf in the mirror, and the middle drawer and cupboard in the basin cabinet were all cleared for Freda's integration. Lounge room, check. Dining room, check. Bedroom, check. Bathroom, check. Now it was just the kitchen. Freda scattered her items across the tiles and swiftly arranged them into their new areas. She tried to keep some of her plates and bowls separate. When it came to kitchenware, she didn't like sharing, not even if it was clean. The dirty sink did not ease her unnecessary quirk. Frederica made one last adjustment to her action figure atop the desk, and then collapsed onto her bed. She was satisfied. She found a place for everything. This was a big day, she said to herself, followed by a big yawn. I'm ready for bed. Another three years had passed. Frederica was no closer to finding a job that would put her arts degree to use. She remained a barista, a very talented and experienced one, but it was nothing she felt passionate or particularly proud of. However, she had something else that had gained her love and attention. A person. A boyfriend. He was the perfect man. He worked out, had a great music collection, and lived in a really flash, albeit small, high-rise apartment. Freda was so excited to move in with him, and then she looked around the apartment and saw how little space there was for her things. Her boyfriend was working late, so it was just her to sort through both her and his stuff to get everything to fit. She got to work first in the bathroom. As her habit dictated, she unpacked all the contents from the boxes and piled it on the floor. Conveniently, the toiletries of Freda's boyfriend didn't take up too much space, and she was even able to match her items with his. His and her shampoo, his and her shavers, his and her toothbrushes. There was a clear display that this bathroom was for a couple in a relationship. Freda was rather pleased with this, although she wished she could have figured out a way for the toilet paper to be closer to the toilet. She'd have to make sure to grab a roll before sitting down for number two. Freda made some mean poo-poos. The bedroom was the next target for the unpack attack, although most of the assault was carried out in the wardrobe. The two rivaling sides of male and female clothing needed to find a way to coexist, and that started with a restructuring of the messy drawers. The female integration followed the new neatness of the male drawers and meant both could fit some extra clothes in them. This enabled more space in the wider wardrobe for the rest of the female clothes to make home. Not everything cooperated though. History repeated itself and Freda couldn't line up all the shoes. One pair was shoved up the back. To add on to this displeasure, her framed uni degree certificate had nowhere to hang up. Thus, it had to sit out of sight and out of mind in the wardrobe. Frederica was feeling rather unhappy about this. So to lift her spirits, she went to the most exciting room, the kitchen. As she put up photos on the fridge, her emotions raised up again beautiful places she had been, her friends, her boyfriend, they were far more special than any degree or career. She continued unpacking. It was a bit of a squeeze but she managed to shove everything into somewhere, going against the grain of the very well-kept kitchen. Freda wondered why the drawers had been so messy. 
The lounge room was the last room. It didn't have much more capacity than the other rooms, but it sure did have a lot more boxes. She spent an eternity shuffling around her books, movies and games onto that damn living room shelf. Freda didn't care about all the cool stuff her boyfriend had now. She wished he just had less of it. Or that she had less of her stuff. In the fray of the storage frustration, Freda hadn't realised all her drawing equipment had been split up. The markers were on the bedside table, the drawing tablet hidden in the wardrobe, and the drawing books in a completely different room. A minor inconvenience, perhaps, but that doesn't include the fact that there was no creative space or desk for her to do her passion. The kitchen bench or the couch would have to do. Barely managed to fit myself in here, Freda sighed, sitting on the bed. She meant that physically, but in her subconscious, she felt as though she barely fitted in here mentally. Frederica looked over to Mr. Piggy, accompanied by Henny, Chicky, and the newborns. None of them sat on the bed. The breakup was hard, but it was for the best. Freda needed to return to somewhere that made her happy, and that was home. Initially, it felt like admitting defeat returning here, that the world had chewed her up and spat her down onto the ground. But as she unpacked, everything fit into place, and it felt like she was beginning to recharge herself. The drawing tablet and laptop easily fit atop the desk, as did the other art supplies. Above it, her degree was on full display. To the side, all of her books sat nice and snug on the shelves. Henny and her chicks even found friendship with some of the OGs. And back from the dead was that silly poster, which Freda discovered a newfound love for. Best of all, Mr. Piggy was back on the bed. And that boyfriend? Well, he was the one hidden away now. This bathroom was also much cosier and prettier than the last one. That whole apartment had a dull, modern vibe to it. Anyway... Frederica stood in the warm rays of afternoon sunshine that burst through her window. This room used to feel bigger, she said as the arts degree caught her eye. And so did my aspirations, she thought to herself. It was no doubt time to change that. In just over six months, Frederica was making her comeback. In that short amount of time, she had managed to gain a steady income so she could move into her very own five-room apartment. It wasn't flashy, but it had so much more space than that high-rise place. Freda was so excited to move in that she began unpacking immediately as she came through the front door and into the living room. From the boxes came travel souvenirs, books, a Wii console, games, movies, new furniture, and some plushies, both new and old. Freda wasn't quite sure what things she would keep in the living room and what things would go elsewhere, so she decided to leave it for now and go onto the bathroom. All of her stuff quickly made its way onto the floor. The toilet paper made a thankful return to the side of the toilet, where it was well within one's reach. Beside the sink, some new additions were introduced, a bigger bin, that blue one was pitiful, and a weight scale. Exercise only gets harder as you age, and it's even harder with a sore back. Freda knew she'd be able to stay healthy, but the scales were handy for when the cookie jar suddenly got emptied. Something that was good when empty were drawers, and that's just what the sink had. The bottom one welcomed a hair straightener, above some band-aids and other medical things, above again were some lady things, and on the top level went the body grooming tools, hairbrush, nail clippers, shaver, and tweezers. Anything else that didn't fit went either in the mirror cupboard or on the basin shelf. All that was left was some bug spray, which Freda moved to the kitchen. She decided that now it was time to begin in the bedroom. It was mainly clothing that came out of the boxes, but there were some other things like candles, mismatched coat hangers, and some things that were perfect for her bedside table. The clothes sorting started in the wardrobe, where Freda was finally able to line up all of her shoes. Beside them on a low shelf, she fitted her bras, hot water bottle, and any clothes that didn't fit on the hangers. Her socks and undies went in the drawers of the bedside table. Everything was finding a place so easily. 
A notebook was left over to which she took to possibly the greatest room she had ever had. A big study with a big desk. As the cardboard disappeared, the creativity reappeared. Dozens of markers, many drawing books, colourful artworks, and lots of other things lit up the room. This was clearly where Freda would be meeting her aspirations and beyond. On the cork board next to her degree were character designs she had been brainstorming. She had great plans for them. Her easel, new printing equipment, an expansive workstation for sure bring them to life. Before moving on to the kitchen, Frederica went back to the lounge room to see if she had any ideas for where the stuff on the floor should go. Looking at the travel knickknacks, the perfect location came to mind. Lined up on the windowsill in the bedroom, in a spiritual way, them being above her head, Freda thought she might dream about those places at night. The soft toys definitely had to go into her bedroom too, specifically on the bed with Mr. Piggy. If Freda wasn't drowning in plushies at night, there would be no sleeping or dreaming. Onto the kitchen, which as per usual was miles away from being in any way interesting. From the boxes though came a menorah. Judaism was a religion that had provided great comfort and peace for Freda. She put the candelabrum atop the shelving unit in the living room, where it was closest to the heavens above. After the kitchen was begrudgingly completed, Freda finished tidying up the lounge room, with all of the gaming stuff going on or in the TV cabinet, and the rest of the books and whatnots going on the shelves. Freda entered her bedroom, ready to officially admit victory for her unpacking, when she suddenly realised that her wardrobe opened up the other way? Revealing a whole new set of drawers, she could not comprehend not making use of the space, so she went back to organising. She transferred all of her undergarments and some other clothes into the new drawers, allowing for the low wardrobe shelf to be used as a shoe rack, and hallelujah, they all fitted perfectly. Still, it felt like there were several barren areas that needed to be taken advantage of. For once, Freda didn't have enough stuff, which itched her brain a little. The thought fell from her mind as her large bed attracted her attention. A queen-size bed, all to myself, she exclaimed with joy. It felt like she was truly moving up in the world. The phoenix had risen from the ashes, but after many hours of unpacking, it was time for the phoenix to rest. <laughs> The voids that had inhabited Frederica's house for the past two years would now be filled. Her girlfriend, Lena, was moving into her home and her heart. Freda's bond with her new partner rivaled that of Mr. Piggy and his new partner. Lena introduced Mr. Tiger, and the two softies had become instantly smitten. Despite the fact that Lena was the one moving in, Frederica insisted on doing all the unpacking. Lena knew that Freda loved to do the seemingly mundane task, so she was more than happy for her to do the chore. Freda began in the bedroom, where like the rest of the house, new furniture had been installed, which filled in a lot of spaces and provided more storage. A new matching set of drawers was now in the wardrobe, where all of Lena's undergarments and other assorted clothes could go. All of her colourful dresses and crop top shirts were also added above with new coat hangers. The shoe rack was now bigger, and lo and behold it fit all the new shoes, with the boots nice and snug beside. Of everything, Freda's favourite new addition were the walkie talkies, which were assigned to each side of the bed, symbolising how the two women were connected in more ways than one. Freda had tried the his and her bathroom thing which obviously didn't work out in the end, but now the her and her bathroom would improve upon that idea. Her and her shampoo, her and her towels, her and her loofah sponge, it all went together magically. Although, Lena did have quite a lot of beauty stuff, which soaked up a lot of room, but considering Freda had a whole study for herself, she figured the least she could do was let her girlfriend cover the bathroom in makeup, eyelash trimmers, and whatever else. Changing focus to the lounge room, which actually had a lounge now, Freda emptied the rather fancy white boxes that held Lena's things. From them came some comfy cushions, a slew of great films on Blu-ray, a bunch of new books, some very pretty cultural decorations, and equipment for the ever-present love that Lena had for plants. When all of these things had slid into place, the lounge room looked cosier than ever. 
Next was the kitchen, and fortunately, Lena hadn't brought too many new things for it. In fact, the things she did bring looked very interesting. A mortar and pestle, rice cooker, bamboo steamers. Freda was very keen to see what Lena would cook up with these. Frederica peered into each of the rooms. They all felt so much more whole now, through clutter and colour, particularly the bedroom. So glad for all of that wardrobe space now, chuckled Freda, remembering the discomfort from the initial wasted space. Ah, could life get any better? The answer? Yes. Yes, it could. Frederica was a more than accomplished artist with her very own published book. Her and Lena had also bought a beautiful house with 10 rooms, plus a garage and big yard. And best of all, a new family member was on the way, a baby girl named Talia. Rather than having their own child, Frederica and Lena were adopting and were in the final stages of completing the paperwork. Unpacking into this house, it wouldn't just be about finding a place to store things. It would be about turning it into a true home for a family. Freda set upon this mission by commencing in the entryway. There wasn't much to put in here. The front door, stairs and openings into the lounge area and garage made this room into an intersection more than anything. Only one small stretch of wall could allow to have things in front of it. It was enough to fit Freda's favourite piece of furniture, the blessed shoe rack. Like before, both her and Lena's footwear fit like a glove or a shoe. To make the room a little more lively, Freda added the travel souvenirs to a small shelf and two art pieces to the adjoining staircase wall. It was a quick job, but with all the other areas of the house that needed unpacking, that was a good thing. Once Freda stopped fiddling with the souvenirs, she took a leftover towel up to the bathroom. All the bathroom boxes got emptied and Freda soon became trapped. The floor was an absolute minefield. Even the bath had no space to spare. She tried her best to navigate the problem she had caused, having to tiptoe, prance and reach around the little city of beauty, hygiene and medical products rising up from the tiles. Despite this bathroom being the same size, if not a little bigger than the last one, Freda felt it was a lot more compact or squished. She wasn't sure why. She had rushed through it a little bit, hence the mismatched towels, messy bench and mediocre sorting of things onto the shelf which was not very baby-proof. Freda didn't give it much thought because she had already made her way into the master bedroom's walk-in wardrobe. In here, the two lovers' enormous coat hanger collection was unveiled, all matching, all made of wood, and all together able to carry the vast majority of clothes Freda and Lena owned. The wall of hanging colour acted as an artwork against the white walls and a testament to the power of the coat hanger. Truly impressive. The non-coat hanger friendly clothing was able to make full use of the numerous drawers and shelves that remained. There was even room left for hats, bags and accessory containers. Frederica left the wardrobe feeling quite shocked with two pairs of pyjamas to be put beneath the bedroom pillows. There weren't many things in the bedroom, as the wardrobe had swallowed up mostly everything. There hadn't been much her and her action in the chaos of the bathroom, but here in the more minimalist and mellow environment, there were her and her yoga mats, speakers, walkie-talkies, and of course, the plushies. Henny was way ahead of the two women on the baby front. She now had nine little chicks. Alonzo, Nathan, Olivia, Rhubarb, Elron, Chicky, Thumbelina, and Leonardo were all very keen to get to know Long Bear. Long Bear simply faced the other direction and enjoyed the peace while it lasted. Frederica, on the other hand, couldn't wait for the piece to end. She wanted the whole baby package, crying and all. Before the baby Talia could come home though, she'd need her room to be set up, which is exactly what Freda did next. Blocks, balls and books were all waiting for Talia to play with. She had wonderful shirts and soft nappies to wear, dangly things to swing her arms at, and soft toys to keep her company in the cot. Mr. Piggy and Mr. Tiger had a new life to look after, and with the help of Little Hops, they were certain that Talia would be the most joyous human they had ever raised. The cot was armed for comfort, beside the armchair the table was prepared for story time, and the nappy changing station was locked and loaded, with everything a baby needed to go from stinky and messy to clean and fresh. 
The day Talia came home could not come soon enough. The powder room was next, and it was very small. Smaller than the entryway with even less things to put in there. Plants, toilet paper, bin, towel, spray and soap. That's all there was. Honestly, why is this room even in the game? Why this and not the garage or garden? Anyway, Freda had already finished unpacking into it by the end of this very sentence. Onwards now to the study, Freda's creative headquarters. Her desk faced out the window so in times of thought she could look to the trees and sky. When ideas blossomed, her brand new drawing tablet was ready to assist in the creation of her next bestseller. On that topic, Freda had a whole stack of her brand new children's book, which she had authored and illustrated. She was going on a book tour to schools and libraries all around the country, and would be giving out some free copies to kids. The book was a smash hit, with talks of it even becoming an animated TV show to rival the likes of Bluey. The framed degree between the book poster and character drawings had proven its worth. Her university debt was completely paid off, and she was earning a comfortable amount of money, comfortable enough to buy a house with a dining room. The bookshelf made the space a little bit cramped, but it was a step up from the two chairs in a kitchen dynamic. Four chairs meant there was room for Freda, Lena, Talia, and someone else. Maybe even another family member. Freda thought it may be wise to wait until Talia could actually sit in a chair before thinking about another child. With the table set, and the bookshelf occupied by special items and, well, books, it was time to go to the next room. The kitchen! There was a lot of stuff to go into the kitchen. A lot of boring and uninteresting stuff. So, Freda just organized it all very, very fast. The final destination was the living room, and the final boxes held the most entertaining items. Disc cases for movies and video games lined the shelves. A small watering station was set up, along with a plant and a very pretty bird painting. This was Lena's fun zone, which Freda didn't entirely understand, although she was the one that found joy in unpacking cardboard boxes. Board games sat beneath the coffee table, and up above some interesting oddities could be found. Freda did one last lap around the house to tidy things up and make sure no item was out of place. The study, the dining room, the kitchen, the lounge room, the entryway, the bathroom, the wardrobe, the bedroom, and finally the baby room. Freda didn't worry about the powder room. It was all done. Mission complete. Frederica picked up Mr. Piggy and thought about Talia. We're so looking forward to meeting you, she said in an excited tone. Frederica, Talia, and Lena, at peace in the garden, looking on to the evening sun as it falls down from the horizon, their belongings unpacked into a home for them to share. This is not the end of Frederica's tale, it is only the beginning of a life that is long and full of love. That concludes my telling of the story of Frederica. But I pass the question on to you, how will you unpack your life? Unpacking is a fantastic game. It looks great, plays great, and sounds great. Seriously, I absolutely love this soundtrack. It's available on all of these things here. I'll drop a link to the Unpacking website in the description below where you can access these links. I played it on the Xbox PC Game Pass, which is probably where I'd recommend you get it too, as the game by itself is a little bit pricey for something that's only around 5 hours long. That being said, it was made by an Australian indie game studio called Witchbeam, so paying full price will definitely support those talented folks. Plus, it costs significantly less than the half assed bullshit AAA developers are putting out these days. Like seriously, Redfall, $119? Anyway. I hope you enjoy this video, any criticism or feedback on the script, audio, editing, anything really, leave in the comments, I'm always looking to improve. Until next time, this has been Flurgo, and to you I say farewell.